In this mini clip, we'll be discussing domain. While we answer this question together, you will be solving a similar problem on your own using the same technique. We're asked to find the domain of this function here. To solve this question, we're going to look at the function in two different parts. We're going to find the domain of each one of these parts and then combine our restrictions together to find the overall domain. Let's begin by looking at the first part, 1 divided by sine x minus 1. So we want to find the domain of this fraction. When finding the domain, we need to find all the restrictions on our x variable. Now remember, the denominator of a fraction can never equal 0. So our first restriction will be that sine of x minus 1 cannot equal 0. To solve for x, we're going to isolate for sine x here by bringing this negative 1 to the other side. This will give us sine of x. cannot equal 1. Now, to isolate for our x, we need to find the angle such that sine of that angle is equal to 1. Thinking of our sine graph, this angle is pi over 2. So when x is equal to pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. But since we don't want sine of x to equal 1, that we know that our x cannot equal pi over 2 because sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So we know that x cannot equal pi over 2. Because the sine function is a periodic function, this means that it keeps repeating itself every 2 pi. This means that if I were to add or subtract 2 pi, from pi over 2, then sine of this new angle will also equal 1. This means that we have some more restrictions on our x variable. We will also have that x cannot equal pi over 2 plus or minus 2 pi. However, if we were to add or subtract another 2 pi, once again, sine of this angle will equal 1. So adding another 2 pi onto this term will give us pi over 2 plus or minus 4 pi. And now we can keep adding or subtracting 2 pi from here. So I'm going to indicate that this keeps on going by 3 dots. I'm just going to rewrite our restriction on x now, just to make it a little bit nicer. So we will have x cannot equal. We'll notice that in each one of these terms, we have pi over 2. So I'm going to write pi over 2. You'll also notice that in each one of these terms, we're adding or subtracting by some factor of 2 pi except for this first term. This one, we're not adding 2 pi or subtracting 2 pi at all. In the second term, we're adding or subtracting 2 pi. In this third term, we're adding or subtracting 2 times 2 pi. So, we're going to be adding or subtracting 2 times a factor of pi, which is, will be n. Now, this factor, we need to define n is equal to. Now, our first term, we don't want to add or subtract 2 pi, which means our n needs to be 0. Starts at 0. In our second term, we're adding or subtracting by 1, 2 pi. So, we need this to be 1 in order to get 2 pi here. In the third term, we need to add or subtract by 4 pi, which means our n needs to be 2. So you can kind of see the pattern here, and this will continue on. I would now like you to find the restrictions on the x variable for the first part 
the function you are given. 1 divided by cos x minus 1. Here's the answer you should have got. Coming back to our question, now let's look at our second part, the square root of 1 minus cos squared x. Now we're going to find the domain of this. We always want to ensure that we are taking the square root of a positive number or a number equal to zero. Therefore, we need one minus cos squared x greater than or equal to zero. Now, since we're solving for the domain, we need to isolate for our x. But I'm first just going to bring this cos squared x to the other side of the inequality sign. And this will give me that 1 is greater than or equal to cos squared of x. Now this can be rewritten with cos squared x out in front. However, I'll need to change my inequality sign. So I can rewrite this line by saying cos squared x is less than or equal to 1. So what this is telling us is that in order to ensure that the number underneath the square root is positive or equal to 0, we need to have cos squared x less than or equal to 1. Well, let's take a closer look at this function, cos squared x. To graph cos squared x, you simply have to square all the y values of the graph of cos x. When squaring these y values of cos x, you'll realize that the lowest y value for the graph of cos squared x will be zero, since we won't have any negative values for y anymore because of the square. The largest y value for cos squared x will be one. So in fact, this function is already bounded between 0 and 1. So this satisfies our restriction because it says that cos squared x must be less than or equal to 1. But this is already true. Therefore, we have no restrictions because cos squared x is bounded between 0 and 1. So to find our overall domain of our function, we need to combine the restrictions on x of the first part of our function as well as the second part. But because we found no restrictions in the second part, our domain is really going to be based on this restriction here. So now I'm just going to write out our final answer. Domain, which is just a d, a colon, and then our squiggly bracket. Because we're looking at our x variable, I have x, such that, and now my restrictions on x is going to be this. So I'm going to copy this out under here. And this is our final domain. I would now like you to finish off the question that you were working on. And this should be your overall domain.